What do the Roma tomato, red spinach, and huckleberry gold potato all have in common? They're vegetables. They're all round. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know the answer? Well, listen further and find out. This is Science in Your Shopping Cart, and I'm Todd Silver. Tomatoes, spinach, and potatoes. These three vegetables have been part of the human diet for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Okay, so technically tomatoes are fruits, but we treat them as very close cousins in the vegetable family. These three vegetables, or two vegetables and a fruit if you will, they're loaded with healthy good stuff that make them as tasty as well as great for our bodies. And they're versatile. The tomato alone has over a hundred different varieties. So what do these three items have in common? The Roma tomato, the red spinach, and the huckleberry gold potato? To find out, we'll have to travel to potato country Idaho, and then to sunny California. But first, let's explore the origins of the Roma tomato, and head to Italy. Ah, Rome, truly one of the great cities on earth. Rome is home to around 3 million residents, and millions more visit each year, walking their streets, churches, and amazing historical sites. From the Colosseum to the Spanish Steps, Rome is also home to some of the most amazing food and wine in the world. So it's no surprise that the hearty Roma tomato was invented in the Eternal City. Wait, it says here the Roma tomato wasn't invented in Rome? It was developed in Beltsville, Maryland? Can this be right? So you started in this building here? This is where I was, yes. I, actually, I started building two. Then we went to building 50. <laughs> I visited Dr. Atora Matu, a researcher in Beltsville's Sustainable Agricultural Systems Laboratory. He showed me one of the greenhouses where different varieties of tomatoes are developed. Okay, so what are we looking at here? So here we have about five different ways of transforming tomatoes and for different purposes actually. One is high yield, uh, better nutrition, high lycopene tomatoes, and also a couple of them for resistance to abiotic stresses. So that is what you see here. Dr. Mertu explained that the Roma tomato was developed here in Beltsville in 1955 by ARS scientist William Port. The elongated Italian red tomato was bred from the San Marzano and Red Top varieties. The Roma was developed to be highly resistant to wilt, to be grown in a variety of climates, and with its heavy, fleshy outer and inner walls, give it protection against pests. Researchers later found out that the Roma was also a reasonable source of lycopene. You mentioned the lycopene, and then the advantage of a tomato that's rich in that source it's is... anti-cancer. It's known that the lycopene consumption is anti-cancerous. It's very good for health, actually. Okay. It's a carotenoid. You know, carotenoid, you have different kinds of carotenoids, but lycopene particularly is a special one that has been shown to be anti-cancerous. Today, ARS researchers are cultivating new varieties that have a brighter appearance, are tastier, more disease resistant, and are more suited to handle climate stressors. We are trying to figure out certain of these cultivars that have developed resistance to drought and to heat and to cold. So if you have minus, four, see, tomatoes cannot be kept at four degrees too long because they get destroyed, okay? So, but we have some genes in these that allow them to stay at four for a little longer if you want to, and they are the, because they provide them cold tolerance to these tomatoes. Same way we have done this for the heat, very high heat, so they get destroyed. So in our case, they recognize the heat, but there are genes that take care of it, and these plants keep going actually even at high heat. So we have four or five different... The tomato research done here in Beltsville has attracted industry members such as Heinz Ketchup, as well as scientists from all over the world. A lot of people around the world have come here, seen these tomatoes for many years. And, and that becomes a good thing because people were interested in what we are doing in the USDA. And this is one of the very productive 
features we have here. So people get excited and also tomatoes are red and, you know. Other previously bred tomatoes produced here in Beltsville can be found in ketchups, canned goods, and of course in the produce section of a grocery store. They can also be grown just about anywhere, including in Rome. Now that's amore. Here's a riddle for you. What's purple on the outside, but gold on the inside? L.A. Lakers road jerseys? How about a yellow-bellied sea snake? Try the Huckleberry Gold Potato, which has a deep purple jacket, but inside the flesh is golden. Unlike the Roma tomato, the Huckleberry Gold Potato was invented where you'd think, Idaho. That's where I traveled, by phone, to learn more about the origins of this unique potato. We're always looking for eye-catching specialty varieties, but purple skin, yellow flesh variety, uh, we thought would be very appealing to customers. So a nice dark purple with a yellow inside and one that will stay that way through cooking really has, we think, a lot of appeal. It's a unique specialty because of its purple skin and yellow flesh. And it's also rated quite highly. Um, it's very good culinary attributes. That's doctors Jonathan Whitworth and Richard Novi two researchers at ARS who developed this potato variety. They work at the Small Grains and Potato Germplasm Research Unit in Aberdeen, Idaho, and they're part of the Tri-State Potato Breeding and Variety Development Program, which comprises researchers in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. They explain that the huckleberry gold has many attributes, including that it's packed with antioxidants. It also has a low starch content, which keeps the potato together when boiling and gives it a more waxy texture. And that's really a good mouthfeel for when you quarter something and, and season it and roast it in the oven. So a little crisp on the outside, but a nice waxy texture and mouthfeel in it. The Huckleberry Gold Potato is available in stores, and for growers, it can be grown in a variety of climates across the United States. It's a very uh, vigorous uh, potato, and... I believe any home gardener, if they were interested in growing it, would have really good uh, results from it. And also um, bulks, um, and what I mean by that is the potatoes will get uh, large underneath the vine rather quickly. So you can sort of keep track um, as a home gardener of at what stage you might want to cut the vine back, let the potatoes cure under the ground, and harvest them if you want larger potatoes and a higher yield, then you would just uh, leave them out in your garden longer. If you decide you want uh, more small mini potatoes, then you would cut the vine back uh, at an earlier stage. And where did the name come from? Well, we have a lot of huckleberries in Idaho. If you have come out this way, you'll see a lot of products made from huckleberries. So that was sort of the origin. Yeah, you're talking to someone who's never had a huckleberry. What, what, what does it taste <laughs> so, like? Yeah, uh, the huckleberry taste is really nice. Um, it's about the size of a, between a, a wild blueberry and, and these great big blueberries that you see that are domesticated. And it's got a nice reddish purple skin on it. And uh, they're they're very delicious. And so they have a high value. Okay, we're getting off track here. Back to potatoes. Huckleberry Gold is just one of the many potatoes developed here. Some of the names may not sound familiar to you, such as the Clearwater Russet, but if you've ever eaten at the Golden Arches, then you've likely had one of these varieties. In North America, there are only seven potato varieties that meet the stringent sensory specifications that McDonald's looks for. And these varieties are called gold standard varieties. And with Clearwater becoming a gold standard variety in 2016, when you go to McDonald's or even other restaurants and have fries, you're very likely uh, that those fries will have come from uh, Clearwater resin. So whether you're looking to sink your teeth into some crispy fries or roast a unique looking potato for a nice dinner, ARS has developed a potato for you.
spinach, the superhero of foods, boasting an impressive list of vitamins and minerals such as folate, beta-carotene, vitamin C, iron, calcium, and potassium. Spinach has been known to improve eye health, lower oxidative stress, reduce blood pressure levels, and may even help prevent certain types of cancer. But the bitter, sometimes gritty taste of some spinach varieties has turned off some shoppers, and the E. coli outbreak and subsequent massive recalls in 2006 caused consumers to shy away from this vitamin-packed superfood. Researchers at ARS's Crop Improvement and Protection Research Unit in Salinas, California, are banking on a bounce back for the once heralded spinach by introducing a new variety. This uh, USDA red spinach variety we just released uh, is the uh, world's first true red spinach. Most of the spinach variety they had a, a little bit of harsh taste, uh, a little bit of bitter taste because of the uh, oxalic acid it has. But uh, this new red spinach variety we developed uh, had a little bit of sweet uh, taste. So it tastes really great. Uh, and I, I joke to people, I said, Maybe I should call it uh, red delicious. <laughs> it really tastes delicious. <laughs> Dr. Beishan Mao was the lead researcher in developing the world's first true red spinach variety in 2019, called USDA Red. The red color comes from uh, beta cyanine. Uh, you know, like uh, most plants have uh, uh, anthocyanin, but uh, a small number of plants like uh, spinach uh, have uh, uh, beta cyanine instead of uh, a more common anthocyanin. Beta cyanine and anthocyanin are both antioxidants, but beta cyanine is a more potent antioxidant. It's been shown to significantly reduce oxidative stress in patients and may even help in preventing chronic pathologies, inflammation, and cancer, according to the scientific literature. In addition to its power punch of health benefits, USDA Red is appealing to the eye with its spade-shaped leaves and blended shades of purple. It also has a moderate amount of sweetness, making it an attractive addition to specialty salads, center plate items, and mixes. Even though it was just recently released, growers, retailers, and researchers are already requesting seeds to grow the new USDA Red. Tremendous uh, uh, interest uh, and demand for this uh, red spinach products. Uh, I have received uh, emails, phone calls from all over the world. <laughs> I hope that the red spinach uh, can bring some uh, excitement and uh, interest uh, to the market and uh, attract more consumers to eat more spinach because spinach is really loaded with phytonutrients and it's a superfood. <laughs> It may take two to three years for USDA red spinach to reach your grocery store or appear at your favorite restaurant, but once it arrives, it may become your favorite green, or should I say, red green. Bigger, stronger, faster. That may be ideal for cars or athletes, but when it comes to food, tastier, safer, and more reliable are the key traits to a winning variety. When ARS scientists create new varieties, such as the Roma tomato, Huckleberry gold potato, or the red spinach, the goal is not just to add a new variety to the long line of fruits and vegetables, but make them tastier, make them more resistant to bugs and diseases so they have a long lifespan. Be on the lookout for these varieties the next time you're at the grocery store and decide for yourself. For Science in Your Shopping Cart, I'm Todd Silver, and thanks for listening. Science in Your Shopping Cart is produced by the Office of Communications Agricultural Research Service at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. For more information, visit www.ars.usda.gov. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Like us on Facebook and watch us on YouTube.